All right, hello class. Um, we are moving on to 1.3.1. .1. We skipped 1.2.2 because it's a lot of coding with the graphing calculator and find it too relevant. Um, today, two problems we looked at, 190, 194. Both are proofs. 90, dealing with the area formula for a non-right triangle, and 94, where we derive the law of sines. Um, I'm not going to do either of those. We'll write the formulas for them because we derived them in class. Um, and then 96, um, we'll look at as an application of the law of signs. All right, so if we um, go to your flipbook, go to 1.3.1, we're going to look at um, non-right triangles. So we'll go at the top. And I'll talk about the two derivations we did. The first one being the area formula for a non-right triangle. We'll use letter K to express that. We started off with the area formula being 1 half base times height. But we did a derivation where we were able to get rid of the height. And instead now we have 1 half AB sine of C. Now I'll draw a picture to kind of visualize this. Let's say we have our triangle. This will be side A, side B, and angle C. So here's your angle C. And you'll notice the relationship here is side, angle, side. The angle is in the middle. And that's kind of the pattern I want you to look for here. Instead of memorizing, um, instead of memorizing A, B, and C, just think of A and B as your two sides, and think of C as the angle in between those sides. All right, and then you can see the pattern more so, and that's the side angle side relationship. Okay, so that is the area formula for a non-right, which we derive. Now we're going to look at the law of sines. And the law of sines looks like this. I'll draw a triangle for you so you can see it'll be non-right. And we'll go ahead and label each one. Let's call this A, B, and C. A, B, and C. And the law of sines is just um, a ratio of opposite side to angle. So we can write it like this. Sine of angle A over A equals sine of angle B over B which equals sine of angle C over C. Now the unique thing about this relationship here is you don't have to memorize a formula. It's just a relationship of the angle to its opposite side. So you see A to A, B to B, and C to C. What you want to think here when you're creating that ratio is think opposite. It's something you can think corresponding to. Alright, opposite. Good. Alright, 196 now. This is going to go right below those notes in the flip book. Reads like this. Nathan lives 200 feet downriver from Tong. Both live across the river from Amy. Nathan views the other two houses at a 100 degree angle while Tong sees them at 38. This map to the right helps us kind of visualize what's going on. Um, if we want to label where the houses are, Amy's going to live down here. Um, Nathan 
views it as a 100 degree angle and Tong will live up here. So we'll go ahead and sketch this map in your flipbook and then label each side. Alright, so we know where Nathan, Amy, and Tong live now, um, but there's some information we need to find. We need to figure out the distance between Nathan and Amy's house and also Amy and Tong's. And to do this, um, first it'll be good to fill in this angle. If we know there's 180 in the triangle, 180 degrees, we know that this angle's got to be 42. Looking at this now, we can identify where our opposite side angle is. The only one we have, the only pair we have is this, 200 feet and 42 degrees, what Amy sees from her house. So if we set this up, we can use the law of sines. We can't use the Pythagorean theorem because it's not a right triangle. So the sine of 42 over 200 feet is equal to, and now we'll solve for x, sine of 38 all over x. Now the easiest way to deal with this algebraically is to do some cross multiplication. I get sine of 42x equals 200 sine of 38. Now to get rid of the sine of 42, we'll divide each side. And the reason we're keeping all this is so we can be more accurate in our calculator. We can type all this in at once x equals 200 sine and make sure that 38 is in parentheses for the calculator so you end up dividing the whole thing by it over sine of 42 and if you put this in your calculator if you put this in your calculator you'll get x equals 184.02 feet make sure you're in degrees if you're in radians it's dealing with pi you're going to get a weird number all right, so that gives us x. Now, we want to find y. The nice thing about using this ratio, oops, nice thing about using this ratio here is you get some nice numbers. So we're going to want to use it again. We solve for x here. Now let's go ahead and solve for y. So y, we're going to use the same exact ratio. You make our life easier over 200. And now we'll just end up solving for y, so we're going to use the other angle, sine of 100 divided by y. Oops. Cross multiply again. Sine of 100. Divide by each side again. Same process, just different numbers. And for this, put this in my calculator. For this one, you'll get y equals 294.35 feet. Now checking these uh, two values with our map, x and y, should make sense here. The longest distance, um, Amy to Tongs, right here, y was 294 feet, which uh, makes sense with our map. Um, we'll be doing a little bit more next class with the law of cosines, deriving that formula, and um, being able to use that to figure out triangles with even less information. Um, hope this helps you with the homework, and um, we'll see you next week.